Hello enjoyers. This is the second episode of Game Development Showcase and today we are going to work with Design Document. If you thought that creating game is always fun, it is always cool, you just sitting and creating some interesting mechanics every time, it is not. You need always create some plan of your game, which is Game Design Document. And actually, game designers work with a design document almost all the time. It is their job. And I'm actual game designer, so it is very familiar for me. And today we are going to work with design document. I'm going to show you what I've created and I'm going to share with you with my thoughts. Let's start. If you want to get my completed projects and created assets, you can subscribe to my Patreon. There you can find some assets and projects from my videos. I would appreciate any support. First page is a game title page and here you need to actually name your game. Currently I don't have the name, so I used my work name, which is Medieval Adventure. And I colored it red, because this is not final name and I need to come back here later. Then we have this game overview. Here you need to actually write everything about your game. And the first part is the story overview. I don't have story now. I have some ideas, but it is not enough to write here a story overview. So I just left it like this. Next part is a gameplay overview. This is more important currently because this is actual our game. And here you need also provide some information about your game. And I provided uh, that my game is a platformer puzzle combat and actually third person action adventure game with platformer puzzle elements. This is the most important part. This game is the third person action adventure game. So this is a genre of the game. And also I mentioned the most important mechanics. All right, next part is a game objective. This is how you win in the game. And currently I uh, wrote finding the artifact and passing all locations, which is not great explanation, but I will come back here later and make it better because currently I don't have enough information about my game. It is just the first version of project. So I will come back later when I create some stuff and I will know better what is my game. Then we have this game endings. This is not uh, necessary. But if you have some game endings, like in the third Become Human, or some other games with different type of endings, then you need to mention them. I don't have currently, but maybe, maybe I will create some. Then we have this win and lose condition. And this is actually how to win in the game and when you lose the game. And win condition is successfully reaching the final location with artifact and surviving the ending. And lose condition is when character die. So basically when your character dies, you lose. Sometimes you can have some side ways to die, for example. I mean side ways to lose. For example, you lost by time, you lost by because you did the wrong decision or something like this. All right, next part, the setting. The setting is the actual environment of the game. And it is also very important to share here what it is. And you can see there's a medieval fantasy vault. The game contains four major locations. Castle, town, dungeon, temple. This is my locations. If you create bigger game, you need mention every single location. Not here. You actually have uh, about level design a separate uh, structure in this hierarchy. But uh, for now, you need at least mention the most important parts. Okay, every location uses the same style this important part, but different architecture elements. Reference of the architecture and natural environment are here. Currently I don't have link, but you can see this is colored red. This means I will need to add here link. And I will create a separate document with references, which is photos, videos, and other stuff that helps me or my level designer, for example, to know what they need to create. Then we have this unique selling points. This is actually the most important part of your game. If you don't have unique selling points, your game is useless. Just don't create game without unique selling points because this is how you will sell your game. This is your unique uh, perks and unique advantages for your actual game. And the first part is mixing up powerful items and artifacts will allow player to show their creativity. Combination of different items lead to create 
15 different specific effects which influence the whole gameplay. This is actually my idea where I want to add some creativity for players so they can mix up some trinkets for example, magic, some powers and create new combination, new effect using this stuff and it could be interesting in my opinion. I saw some games used almost the same type of uh, mechanics but their mechanics kind of unpolished and maybe I can create something better. That's my idea. Next one is Deep Ledge Climbing and Parkour System which character development with char character development provides great experience for players who like smooth and dynamic platforming. I'm going to create not only ledging and you know climbing system, I want to add some parkour elements like in the Prince of Persia, Assassin's Creed and Mirror's Edge. I want to create some dynamic system and I want to mix them all up. We don't have currently that much parkour games with combat because Assassin's Creed now I wouldn't say that climbing system great, at least uh, after Unity, I think this new series with Origins and other, they don't look great. So maybe I can challenge them, maybe. And third part is different type of enemies and weapons allow player to feel diversity in combat. This is kind of generic stuff, but you need to have at least something that, you know, familiar for players. You can create extremely experimental game and uh, think that your game will sell well because people don't like too much innovations and actually I'm going to use spears, I'm going to use swords, magic, so my game will be kind of diverse and this is generic mechanic but I'm going to implement some stuff that you can see rarely in the games. For example, I see too few games where you can actually use spear as main weapon and fight using a spear instead of for example sword which is very standard thing. Then monetization. Monetization is how you will get money. And currently I'm going to use only this part. This game uses one time sell model, which is you pay money, you get the game and then everything else is free. And I think this is currently is okay because uh, my game is far from release and monetization currently is not that important unless you need to plan your monetization. Uh, globally, which is your main part, which is how you will sell initially. And I think initially it will be one time sell model. And then maybe I will add some DLC, maybe, or I will add some other stuff. For example, I currently don't know, but I know that the first part is one time sell model. And then I will figure out later. If you create a AAA game, you need to add everything about monetization because in the AAA they plan everything before release. But for indie it is okay to create the main part and then add other part later. Then we have this gameplay. And here we have this overview, of course. And here you need to share information more detailed. And here we have the game includes three main activities, exploration, combat and puzzle solving. Uh, exploration contains finding items, learning new powers, finding the way forward, and walking through environmental obstacles using parkour and climbing system. Then we have combat with melee weapon, range weapon, attacking system, magic, rune system, which will explain more detailed later in the document, and puzzles, which is solving different riddles, puzzles using the interaction system. Then we have these playable characters. This is the list of characters that a player can use as their character. And currently the player control Marcus as a playable character. And we have this Marcus and you need to add here some story information. You can add also some specific character information. Then you have, for example, other character, this Josiah. Then also story and some specific mechanics. Then we have this player life system. This is actual mechanic of the game. And uh, here you can see the player will have three metrics, which is health, stamina and will. And everything can be improved by character development and the starting value would be 100. Then I explained here what is health, what is stamina and will. Health I think is kind of understandable, but let's go to the stamina. It is uh, responsible for defensive abilities and platforming. And you can see I have already numbers. This is also important, you need to add numbers even if they are not correct and finalized, you need some numbers 
you need some initial information because you will create it later and you need to add that information in your game. So stamina recovers 4% per second, doesn't recover when it used uh, in the last 2 seconds. Dodge cost 20 stamina, parry cost like this, and so on. And you can see actually that we have parry. In the combat system I need to explain this and I need to add link here because currently we don't know what is uh, parry, what is dodge. Then we have this, when the stamina meter is empty, player cannot use defensive abilities if action requires more stamina than the player currently has. The stamina meter becomes empty, but action will be performed, unless action requires more than player's maximal stamina. This is also important information because when you create some mechanics, you need to know how they will work. And this is great explanation of it. Then we have will. Will is actually magical uh, meter, so you can use will to use all magic attacks and some room powers. And this will meter recovers over time, will cannot be replenished by items, but can be upgraded. And we also have here some numbers. Then we have this uh, player movement. This is also very basic stuff, but you need to provide it. Locomotion, you can walk, run, jump and crouch walk. It looks very obvious, and you maybe think, this is not important, everybody knows that player must be able to walk, run, jump. But no, you need to provide everything, because if you don't provide, for example, that player can jump, your developer can skip that part because you don't mention that it is important. So you always need to write everything. Walking, running, jumping, crouch walking and so on. And you can uh, explain it even more detailed here, for example. Then, for example, you can see player can toggle run, which means that a developer must add toggling, not just pressing button holding. Then, for example, Use jumping jump button and crouch button. You can see there is no toggle for crouch. So in my game you need to hold button crouch for crouch walk. But if you if I want I can add actually toggling as well and then my developer or me if I'm developer will understand then the game needs two version of crouching. Then we have this parkour mechanic which contains four type of parkour actions sprinting, vaulting, will run, roll under slide. And there is some uh, notes about what's difference between parkour and locomotion, like sprinting versus running, vaulting versus just jumping, and roll slide against a uh, crouch walk. Then we have this climbing system. This is additional system for my platforming. And this is ledging, shimming, left and right, hanging, jumping, and so on. Mm. Also, there is some explanation. And you can see also numbers is here. Then we have this puzzle, uh, player inventory, which is unavoidable. I need to add player inventory. I need to add some uh, character development because this type of games requires it to be um, more rep uh, replayable. And I also mentioned how my inventory works. So I have limited slots for every type of items and contain the defined amount of items. The player can pick four items for quick access. This is a quick access bar. A quick access allows Player use items during combat instantly for other situation. And I mentioned that some items, all equipments and some quest items are unavailable for combat and cannot be picked for quick access. So here you can see the numbers. Player can carry one set of equipment, 20 items, infinite quest items and 120 resources. And the capacity can be changed by picked up bags. Depending on bag type, the character can carry additional items, equipment and resources. So you can see here already that I use some new mechanics the player can pick up some items that increase that size and actually i need later below here i need to add that information about what is bag what is everything else but also i can here add some links to this and explain them for example in the other section for example section of items that's also working then we have this puzzle solving and you can see this is not finished yet because I don't have actual interaction system for now, I am working currently on this. This is just the first part of my uh, design document overview, and the next uh, week will continue. Currently this is it. You can see I focused on the gameplay first, then I will focus on other stuff, but gameplay is the first because when I have gameplay and the level design, I can actually start to create my demo version of the game and testing it. And it is important because First of all, you can learn what you can create, what you can't create, 
and the second part is you can check out your balance you can check out your numbers and uh, make some fixes nerfing something or buffing something if it is not working mm, this is it currently i hope you enjoy if so hit the like button share comments subscribe to the channel but most importantly enjoy see ya